couple of weeks ago, we talked about imagining a mass on a spring. I got a wall here, ice down here. It's in a vacuum. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to minimize friction. Of course, you can never get rid of friction completely because there'd be friction in the spring itself, like the individual molecules rubbing against each other. Wait, do they really rub against each other? Well, you can pretend they do at least. Their, their, their electron orbitals rub against each other. You know, you've got these stick models of molecules. That's not really what's going on, right? It's just a way of imagining it. Anyway, I'm trying to minimize friction, but there's always a little bit of friction. And therefore, when you pull the mass in a spring, if, if friction's minimized, it's going to oscillate back and forth, essentially periodically. But even if there's a tiny bit of friction, that amplitude's going to go down over time. Turns out a function of the form... <clears throat> e to a negative constant times t times, say, the sine of some constant times t is a good model for the displacement of the mass over time. Let's make it f of t here. Oh, let's pretend it's e to the negative 2t times sine of 3t. That's a function whose graph oscillates like the sine function, but decays in amplitude over time. And what does the graph look like? Mm, I think it's going to look something like this. Oops. And I keep wanting to make it decay to zero without crossing, but it actually does keep crossing the axis infinitely often because of the sine function. In fact, it's a sine of 3t. That's right there. So we can figure out the t intercepts here. They're the same as where sine of 3t is zero. Sine itself is zero when the input is zero, when the input is pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, any integer multiple of pi. So the intercepts of this is going to be when 3t is pi or 2 pi or 3 pi. So the first one's going to be at pi over 3. The second one's going to be at 2 pi over 3. This intercepts at pi, etc. I might wonder though, where does this maximum amplitude occur? What value of t? Put a question mark there. And also, how high does it go? This is really representing the mass starting from rest, which is not the typical thing. Are you hitting it with a hammer to get it going? No, that's not really what's going on here either because it's just a zero slope here. Don't worry about how this mass might get going and moving. Maybe it's on a table and you start rocking the table or something. Don't worry about it. I'm trying to figure out what is that number. Now, it looks like in your picture, my picture here that maybe it's halfway between zero and pi over three, like pi over six, maybe. Is that really right? Let's use calculus to figure it out. How? Take the derivative. Why? Because it's going to have a local maximum here when the derivative is zero, because the slope of the tangent line there is zero. So if I can find the derivative and figure out where it equals zero, that could help me figure out these values. What do I need for the derivative of this? I need the product rule, first of all, because it is a product. When I take the derivative of the left or the right, I will need the chain rule as well. I also, of course, need the derivative of e to the t is e to the t, and the derivative of sine is cosine. So let's see, left, d, right, left, d right, the derivative of sine is cosine, plug in the inside function, multiply times the derivative of the inside. I use the chain rule very fast there. Sine of 3t is a composition. 3t is the inside function. Sine is the outside. The derivative of the outside, sine is cosine, but plug in the inside, then multiply times the derivative of 3t, the inside function. You want to get pretty fast at the chain rule. 
Yes, you want to be accurate. That's very important. But you also want to get better at going faster. That's lefty right plus right d left with the derivative of e to the negative 2t. I need the chain rule again. I get a factor of negative 2. So I want to figure out where this is 0. I want to set this equal to 0 and solve for t. Yikes. Doesn't look so nice. Take a breath. It can be done even by hand, actually. For one thing, we can factor out and e to the negative 2t. And that's a good thing to do because e to a power is never, ever zero. Well, some engineers say e to the negative infinity is zero, but that's not for us. Infinity, negative infinity for us are not numbers. There are some math classes where they are numbers, but not here. Okay. What math classes are they numbers in? Mm, you could say advanced real analysis, maybe logic, number theory, that kind of thing. Where you talk about infinity rigorously. Infinity can be studied rigorously. Pure logic, that's the kind of area where infinity can be studied ri rigorously. So e to the e to power is never zero, so I can get rid of it. Just get rid of that e. I don't need to think about it for figuring out where this is zero, at least. I mean, it is relevant for the function and its derivative. It does affect those things. But as far as figuring out where the derivative is zero, it's irrelevant. That still looks kind of complicated. Let's add two sine t, three t to both sides. Have I made any better? Well, if I now divide both sides by two cos, t, cos 3t, it becomes better because over here, the twos cancel and sine 3t over cos 3t is tangent 3t. And here, the cosine 3t is cancel, at least if you're not dividing by zero. So at least in the case where cosine of 3t is not zero, I get this equation. But if cosine of 3t is zero, tangent is not defined. So you might we, we might be losing solutions here in dividing both, by both sides by 2 cos 3t. We might be losing some solutions, but we might still be finding some of them. I made the equation simpler. Looks like maybe I can get away with taking the inverse tangent now. 3t is inverse tangent of 3 halves. Well, I can do that as long as I realize that's only giving me one answer of infinitely many possible answers. But maybe it's the one I wanted, right? Maybe it's, maybe it's this first one. There's infinitely many places where the slope is zero, though. But maybe this is finding the first one. T is now divide both sides by three, one third inverse tangent of three halves. What is that approximately? Make sure your calculator is in radian mode. Mine is, but I want to go to function mode too. Inverse tangent of three halves. Three halves is 1.5 divided by three. About 0.3276 seems to be the answer here. for one value of t where this graph has a horizontal tangent. Perhaps the first one. Yeah, I mean, pi over three is, that's a little bit bigger than one. This is between zero and one. I guess if what I've done here calculation-wise is accurate, it really reaches its peak a little sooner than what I drew. Is it really right? Let's plot the function. What function? The original function. e to the negative 2t times sine of 3t. e to the negative 2x. 
on the calculator times sine of 3x Let's go from zero to, oh, how about pi over three? I'll make my tick marks uh, pi over, pi over 12 units apart, maybe. Negative one to one here, just to try it and see how it looks for y. The graph's fairly, okay, not too bad a picture here. We could try to find the maximum, or we could just trace it to see if we if it looks like we're at the maximum, where it looks like we are. Close to, yes, close to 0.3 something, 0.32. Is it really where the maximum is? Let's calculate it. Calculate maximum. Left bound, let's go over here. We want a number clearly to the left of that maximum location, right bound. We want a number clearly to the right of it. And a guess somewhere in here. 0.3276, yay, look, right there. It's right. What's the Y value? About 0.432. How is that Y value found? by plugging this number into the original function in place of t, both here and here. If you do that, you should get about 0.432. F of this number is approximately 0.432. So if this were a good model for the mass on a spring, as it starts moving to the right, it would meet, reach its maximum value at this many units of time, say seconds, and its maximum value, its maximum displacement from equilibrium would be this many, say, meters. Of course, that's kind of a big spring if we're talking meters, but don't worry about it. Could we find it like this value too? Let's try it. Let's see if we can. How? We still want to solve essentially this equation, but we want to find some other solution. The inverse tangent just gives us one answer. What would another answer be? How about making 3t equal to not inverse tangent of 3 halves, but inverse tangent of 3 halves? Oh, how about plus pi? I know tangent is periodic with period pi. So if I add pi to the input, it should give me another value where the tangent is 3 halves. To solve for t, divide by three again, one third inverse tangent of three halves plus pi over three. Let's see if that works or not. It's always good to double check it here. So again, inverse tangent of 1.5. I'll just go ahead and add pi right away. Now divide that by three. This seems to be about 1.375. Is that the next place where the graph has a horizontal tangent? Is it this spot right here? It looks like it might be because pi over three is just barely bigger than one. Go back to my graphing window. Go out to say two instead of one. I'll just trace this time. Is this low point when X is close to 1.375? Seems reasonable. There's X is 1.38. The derivative is helping us figure out information about the original function. In particular, where the derivative is zero tells us where the original function has what we call local extreme points, a local maximum here, like the top of a hill. That's like a little hill here. It's like the top of the hill. And a local minimum there, the bottom of a valley. 
Yes, it's more complicated because it involves both cosine and sine and E, which again, we could ignore, but it still is a problem that's doable, okay? So in your homework, you're gonna be taking derivatives of various trig functions as part of it. The section that's due on Wednesday is about trigonometric derivatives, but sometimes you have to think about applications. This is an example of an application. If you're looking for more examples, as usual, there's the problem solving video. I guess we're gonna end class early today. Have a good day.